Hey guys, back here with another video. This time I'm going to redo my video that I did a few years ago that was really popular as the crop versus full frame sensor cameras. And I'm going to update it to 2016 time here. And here for, for uh, demonstration purposes I have the Nikon D500 which is a pro level crop sensor APS-C. And then we have the Nikon D5500 which is an entry level but best bang for your buck crop sensor camera and then we have the Nikon D810 which is a full frame pro level camera. So basically the advantages of crop sensor cameras is they're a lot less expensive both camera bodies and lenses than their full frame counterparts in general although I believe the Nikon D750 and the Nikon D500 right now are about the same price although I have to say the build quality goes to the D500. The other advantage is they're a lot more compact in size, both you know in body and lenses. So example, this is a great one right here. It's a compact camera to begin with. This is almost like the size of an APS-C or uh, a Micro Four Thirds, but this is a Nikon D5500 APS-C size sensor. That's the Nikon D500, and if you look, it's pretty much very close in size, but not quite. So they're getting a lot smaller body there. Of course, that guy's the smallest of them all. So yeah, you're getting a lot more, uh, they're lighter weight and they're a lot more compact just because they don't have to, uh, the crop sensor ones, the image circle is smaller so the image falling on the sensor is not as large so it doesn't have to be as big. So that's one of the advantages, I believe. The other thing is you get a deeper depth of field at a given distance and aperture and I'll explain that quickly. Basically the smaller the sensor the greater chances of your image being sharp from near to far. That's why your smartphone images are pretty sharp. You never see very many blurred uh, subject matter what have you. You know if you take a selfie you'll be in focus and chances are part of the background will be. But as you get larger and up in the sensor size that doesn't become the case anymore. It becomes, so for instance, a full frame, you got to work at it to keep near and far sharper. That's why it's easier to blur the background out. I'm not saying it has better bokeh, but it's easier to blur the, blur the background out on the full frame cameras. The other advantage is the extra field of view reached due to the digital crop factor, not the optical magnification, mind you. So for a Nikon, it's going to be a 1.5, and a Canon, it's going to be a 1.6, just because a Nikon uses a slightly bigger sensor in an APS-C than Canon does. So your extra field of view reach meaning, you know, so your, you know, 50 millimeter isn't really a 50 millimeter. And I, as I explained before, it doesn't really zoom in optically. It just cuts, it just crops into the frame. So if you, if you were to have both side by side and take the same picture at the same distance, the image shot with a crop sensor will appear tighter cropping than it would on a full frame if you have the same focal length set or even the same lens. The other advantage, and this is becoming more prevalent with modern DSLR crop sensors, is the pixel density is higher than a full frame, yielding potentially higher resolution for cropping into the photo, if all things being equal. So meaning if you have a 24 megapixel crop sensor and a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, the crop sensor when you crop in, it's going to have more information in that size. Plus, you're getting that quote-unquote magnification factor, so you won't have to crop in as much. If you crop in on a full frame, a 24 millimeter full frame, or a 24 megapixel full frame, to match the cropping of the, the uh, APS-C, it's going to probably be like a 16 megapixel. So basically, when you're cropping in, you may have like a 16 megapixel image, whereas the crop sensor will have the full 24 megapixel because it's already cropped. That's why a lot of wildlife photographers prefer the high quality crop sensor just for that higher pixel density. Although this is a 36 megapixel and so you know I still have a lot more megapixels to play with here so in this example all things are not equal but if they were both 24 megapixel sensors such as the D, you know, D750 and the D500, the D500 is going to yield a tighter pixel pitch if that makes sense. Um, the other advantage of the APS-C crop sensors is that they can either use full frame or crop lenses on their bodies. So I can stick this full frame, full frame, uh, which I already have. This is 24 to 728. Crop sensors is less 
generally less dynamic range and low light performance compared to a full frame. Although the crop sensor cameras are catching up, the Nikon D500 has awesome low light performance. It's not quite that of the Nikon D810, but in terms of for what it is, it's, it's the gap is uh, closing. But still, in the long run, the dynamic range and low noise goes to the full frame. The other disadvantage of crop sensors, you need to convert the advertised lens, lens, lens focal length for crop sensors by multiplying, you know, the 1.5, 1.6 to get the true focal length. So this 18 to 55, it's not a true 18 to 55. I mean, it's, it's not, I would say it's more closer to like a 24 to 70 or, or really like 28 to 85 probably. So I wish lens manufacturers would start labeling the crop sensor lenses for what they really are, not the 18 to 55. It doesn't sound as impressive. The 28 to 85 doesn't sound as wide or impressive as to saying 18 to 55. So that's one disadvantage. You got to do some math there. And of course, generally, generally speaking, but not always, the build quality on crop sensor cameras are usually inferior to full frame. Although I can't say that now with the Nikon D500. It's pretty robust. It's very, very similar to the Nikon D810. Although not not as nearly as uh, robust as their flagship Nikon D5, which is truly weather sealed. But in terms of build quality, especially like if you look at these two cameras here, the Nikon D5500, definitely not uh, constructed as robustly as the full frame. But that is changing. So again, that the gap is changing, especially from the D500 to the A10. The D610 and the D750 don't have as, um, you know, D750, you know, being a full frame, doesn't have the quite the robust construction I believe as the D500 does. So the gap again there is uh, uh, shortening too as well. Then advantages of full frame. Well the list is smaller than APS-C to crop. So you're gonna get better dynamic range and low noise just because of the larger sensor size. Just to physically having a larger area to uh, resolve, to, you know, to catch the photons and resolve the image. That's just physics, you know, larger, bigger is better. Larger is better in this sense. Of course, the other advantage of the full frame is the focal length of the lens actually matches what's printed on the lens itself. So a 24 to 70 will really be a 24 to 70 on a full frame. The 70 to 200 will be a 70 to 200. You don't have to do any uh, multiplication tables there, whereas on a crop sensor, like I said, it's you got that 1.5 or 1.6 crop to put in there. The other advantage, you know, along that same line is with a full frame, you're going to get a wider angle point of view. So my 24 millimeter will be a true 24 millimeter. The lens selection and the pro level are a lot better too as well. Of course, you can use pro level lenses on an APS-C size, so there's the advantage for that. But in terms of general wide angle, you're going to get better quality lenses in the full frame. Although that is changing as well too. Sigma is coming out with some pretty nice ones. Their art series, like their 18 to 35 1.8 for APS-C is an awesome lens. I would definitely recommend that. The other advantages, uh, as mentioned before, is generally, but not always, the full frame are more, they have more robust construction, ergonomics, and weather sealing. Although the D500 is changing that. This is pretty much similar. It's not, the, the D500 be, being a crop sensor is actually a, a better construction than let's say the Nikon's full frame D750. So like I said, the gap between the crop and full frame is closing pretty fast. Although like I said, you know, generally the physics of the, the larger sensor is going to win out for the most part. But the advantages are not as great as I originally uh, mentioned in my video five years ago. And then, how about the disadvantages of full frame sensor as well? They're going to be more expensive than your crop sensor counterparts. Although, like I said, the D750 and the D500 are the same price. And one's a full frame and one's a crop. So that's, like I said, the gap is closing there. But generally, they're going to be more expensive camera bodies and lenses than the crop sensors. The larger, they're going to be larger and heavier bodies, larger bodies and lenses because it has to, you know, make a bigger, the image circle is larger because of, the sensor is larger, so the body it's going to be bigger, and the lens obviously that we can see like the depth of both of them here, and of course from here to here is a huge difference. But and then the other disadvantage is they can only use full frame size lenses designed for full frame. So I can't put a APS-C crop 
lens on a full frame because you get serious vignetting so I can't go the other way although from a crop sensor I can use both crop and full frame so that's the disadvantage of the full frame is I can't use the crop sensor lenses I mean there are pretty good lenses out there in the full frame but you know just for the flexibility the other thing is the camera the less camera choices in the full frame than there, than there is in crop as well so that you know if you're looking for different models you know Nikon only has a few handfuls that is Canon you know the full frame but if you look at their APS-C they got a lot lot more so in terms of camera choice that is better in that sense so yeah guys pretty much the uh, cameras are gotten a lot better especially in the APS-C and look at how small this guy is this is this is my new favorite uh, entry-level DSLR just you know I mentioned it in my buying guide but flip out touchscreen fully articulated 1080 video if this thing did 4k video this would be a killer camera and it's really lightweight but yeah so you know what to get my advice is going to be pretty much the same as it was five years ago buy a quality crop sensor camera and put your money in the lenses if you have to have full frame go for it i mean it's not a big 